Hi, this is Tom Scioli, and I uh, wanted to do a short little video about um, this comic, All Winners, number 19. Um, I just thought it was a really interesting uh, historical curiosity that um, establishes a lot of the um, elements of the Marvel Comics formula of the 1960s, specifically the the Jack Kirby, Stan Lee, Marvel Comics formula, um, except the, this comic was written in 1946 by Bill Finger. And a lot of the elements in this story kind of kind of jump out to me. And so I, I think, you know, with, with um, you know, the recent death of Stan Lee, um, it's uh, sort of uh, reignited the, the conversation of you know, what did Jack do? What did Stan do? What did each one bring to the table for for the Marvel formula? And that, um, you know, sort of the, that, that successful 1960s Marvel formula is like a very complicated thing with a lot of elements. And I feel like this is just like another piece of the puzzle. Now, um, uh, and, and, and it seems to have a lot of, at least as far as I can tell, the earliest appearance of of a lot of different things I would say are, are, you know, part of what made Marvel, uh, the, the Marvel comics we remember, the Fantastic Four, the, the, the Avengers, um, you know, uh, what, what made those things, um, you know, so memorable, so good and, and, and so successful. Um, now, so before I jump into it, the, um, this, uh, this this comic this is a reprint of All Winners nineteen uh, from uh, I guess maybe like the early it was maybe an early nineties reprint maybe late eighties and uh, in the back it's got some uh, some uh, you know uh, historical context by uh, written by Roy Thomas uh, this was a, a while ago so. Um, it's, it, it, there, there's some questions here and, and some things that, that jump out to me as, as uh, seeming to be maybe inaccuracies. So, um, you know, with the passage of time, we, you know, uh, we kind of get a better idea of, of, you know, the answers to some of these questions. So I don't know if maybe, maybe Roy Thomas has, has more information about, or someone else has chimed in with, you know, maybe more information, but, but, I, I, um, uh, according to this, the the uh, they they don't know who the odd artist is on this comic. Um, uh, um, Roy suggests the possibility of of Sid Shores, which which looks um, you know kind of bears out to me just just from like a, a quick look. But but you know it's one of those things like uh, you know who inked Fantastic Four number one, where you know we might we might not uh, ever find a, a conclusive answer. Um, and then he lists as the writer, Bill Finger, um, and and uh, um, who who was the co-creator of Batman, sort of the 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 co-creator of Batman, who long you know was was in the shadows. Uh, Bob Kane sort of had you know got all the credit, and 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 uh, you know, um, and and Bill Finger was kind of forgotten you know, for a really long time as, as the co-creator of Batman. Um, but, uh, you know, Bill Finger is, you know, one of the early innovators of comics, um, you know, really, really talented writer who brought a lot to the table. So, um, so as, be you know, it, uh, as best as I can tell, um, you know, Bill Finger is, is the writer, is, is acknowledged as the writer, still the writer. Now at this time, Stan Lee, was uh the the editor of of marvel and um you know and and would be for for many decades after that um and you know he was he he was writing a lot of books at the time and so it's possible that his hand was involved in this too he he may have you know had some some role in in the story um you know that uh that's speculation on my part um that we may, you know, never, never find the answer to, but, um, it, this feels very much like a Stan Lee written story. So I would say either, uh, Stan had a hand in it or was very influenced by, um, Bill Finger's, uh, approach in this. Uh, 
And um, uh, so before I get right into it, just, just uh, the All Winners, um, as far as I can tell, this is Marvel's first super team comic, uh, the All Winners squad. Um, there was um, there was a team that uh, Jack Kirby and Joe Simon did prior to this called the Young Allies, which was kind of like a like a kid gang team of of just you know some some uh, normal kids who, who were kind of uh, reminiscent of um, oh I forget the name of it but it was like uh, in the '60s Marvel comics Rick Jones had sort of like a uh, like a like a, a, a radio brigade or something like these these kids on on their CB radio or their their ham radios or whatever um, uh, that that would sort of come to the aid of the the Avengers from time to time. Um, and so this, this is, is kind of like a, um, I mean, uh, young allies was kind of like a precursor to that, but young allies had as their leader had Bucky, um, uh, Captain America's sidekick. And then later on, um, Toro, the, the human torches sidekick joined the team. Um, and, and, and so maybe that, that, that might tech, but I feel like that doesn't quite qualify as, as like a superhero team, just because there's only really like two superheroes and, and then a bunch of just sort of ordinary kids, but all winners kind of fits that superhero team model of, um, you know, like the fantastic four. Although I'd say it's, it's probably a, a closer, um, correlation would be to the Avengers, um, uh, it, it's, and, you know, in fact, some of the members, uh, end up being Avengers. Uh, but anyway, I just, just to sort of get to, to the, the, the main elements I wanted to address, um, this one up here, the story starts with sky writing, summoning the other members of, of this team, uh, you know, calling Captain America, Submariner, Miss America, Wizard, emergency, go to the city museum at once. And which is, uh, you know, pretty much the way Fantastic Four number one starts with, you know, a big, big, you know, smoke message in the sky of, of, um, you know, Mr. Fantastic, you know, with the words Fantastic Four shot into the sky. So, so, so there's that already. Um, and, and, uh, and, and then it, it, it turns out that the sky writing is done by the, the human torch and and his his sidekick Toro, which was also a um, trope in Fantastic Four, where occasionally you know the the Human Torch would would make the big number four in the sky, or or you know sky right. So so already we have you know like a like an, an element of um, of the the you know the Marvel superhero formula. Uh, right there, you know, stuff that, 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 you know, was directly echoed in, in Fantastic Four, number one. Um, uh, also another note, just, just in, in this sort of historical context stuff in the back, um, uh, Roy Thomas says he asked Stan Lee about this comic and, and he said, Stan Lee said, um, that, that, um, it was one of those things that, that Martin Goodman said, Hey, why don't you take this character, this character, this character, this character, and put them all in, in a book together, which um, is also, you know, sort of part of the story of, or, or lore um, of the, the forming of, of the Fantastic Four that, that, um, you know, uh, there are some accounts that, you know, Martin Goodman said, said, you know, to Stan Lee, like, hey, you know, why don't you put together a super team uh, with the the Human Torch, the the Submariner, and Captain America, you know, and, and maybe some other characters, but put together a super team, and we'll and we'll put out a superhero comic uh, to sort of compete with with DC's Justice League that came out. Um, and 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 so the way the story goes is that, you know, um, when when Stan and Jack were were doing this, they they sort of um, you know sort of abandoned the idea of using those, those older established characters and, and created the fantastic four. Um, you know, your mileage may vary with any of these stories. Um, you know, who knows, but, uh, but anyway, so getting back to this, um, you know, all the, all the various, uh, characters converge and, 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 you know, they come together and, and they tell the story, but, um, the, the big element to me that, that, 
that stuck out uh, when I first read this as like, oh my, you know, this is, you know, dec- decades before the 60s Marvel stuff, but has, uh, you know, one of the key elements to me, which is sort of like the bickering superhero team um, where, you know, unlike Justice Society or, or um, you know, other super teams of the day, these uh, superheroes were not, um, you know, there were personality clashes. Um, they, they weren't all just on the same page and, and um, you know, they, they each, you know, brought their own little storylines uh, with it, which, which to me was, it's a, that's at least trumpeted as, one of the big um, innovations of of sixties Marvel comics and and what what made them so good and so memorable, um, but but that 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 th- at least the basic um, th- those basic elements had had actually been been established you know in the nineteen forties and and as far as I can tell this this comic's the earliest example of that I can find if um, if anybody uh, you know you know can you know uncovers uh, another comic that they they think might might uh, predate this and have those elements of a superhero team where 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 in the members uh, you know sort of bicker and 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 um, have uh, you know uh, you know throw you know barbs back and forth um, you know pl- uh, please let me know but anyway this this when I first read this it it echoed um, what first came to mind was. I think maybe it's issue two of the Avengers, but it's a really early um, issue of the Avengers where, um, you know, the Hulk is 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 on the team and and the uh, the rest of the team you know doesn't trust him and and they they uh, you know blame him for for something that that a shape shifting alien uh, has been doing a shape shifting alien who's been taking the form of the Hulk and they blame him. and so you know. Uh, uh, by the end of the comic, the Hulk, uh, you know, y- you know, yells at the rest of the team and says, "Forget it, I'm out of here. I quit." And and, and you know, uh, uh, jumps away and 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 uh, you know, leaves the group. Uh, and 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 then there's also um, an early issue of the Fantastic Four, maybe issue two or issue three, where the Human Torch does the same thing. He's like, "Oh, I'm sick of you guys. I'm out of here. I quit." And then it becomes like sort of a cliffhanger that carries over into, you know, the next issue. Um, uh, and, and I think even when um, when the Submariner returns in, in you know, one of those early Fantastic Four issues, um, it's the same kind of thing where the Human Torch is like, oh, I'm sick of you guys. I'm, uh, you know, I'm out of here. I quit. He leaves. And then, and then he ends up, you know, running into uh, the Submariner. Uh, who's uh, living at a flop house with with amnesia and no recollection of um, you know who he is or, or or how he came to be there. But um, anyway, this this is the moment. Um, there's there's this this new villain in town named Isbisa, and you know the the team's all trying to figure out you know who is this guy, um, uh, and. Um, and 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 Isbisa mentions somebody named Roman uh, as a as a um, as a co-conspirator, and so Captain America brings up you know the question Roman uh, you know Roman spelled backwards is Namor Namor you know and and so then the rest of the team are like you know uh, like you know are, Namor are you working with this Isbisa guy and. Uh, Namor, who's you know kind of uh, like like an antihero, uh, you know he he, you know he's he's maybe the earliest model of that classic '60s Marvel character, you know of like like the Hulk or something, where it's sort of this character where you're like not sure are they a hero or are they a monster, or are they a villain, or you know and and that that role can can alternate you know based on their moods or and and so but but anyway so so. You know they make the they they raise the accusation the possibility to Namor, and and he says you're serious about all about this all of you believe it, okay if you feel that way about it then I'll take my cue and get out of here so Namor you know runs away leaves the group, um, and then uh, in an echo uh, um, or, or 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 you know later echoed 
uh, by that Avengers issue where the Hulk storms out. The Human Torch's sidekick, Toro, says, you know, he's got a right to be sore. That's no way to treat a pal. I'm going to stick with him a while so he doesn't feel so bad. So he goes out, uh, you know, and and chases Namor and, you know, follows him and, you know, makes sure he's he's okay and stands up for him, which is, uh, you know, just like the moment in in that Avengers issue uh, where the Hulk, you know, gets insulted by the group uh, believing that, that he's a, a villain, he, he leaves. And then Rick Jones goes running after him and says, you know, Hey Hulk, it, you know, it's okay. I'm, I'm with you. So, um, so that's, that's, you know, sort of the beginning of the story. And then, and then the story goes off into, into sort of more, uh, you know, standard superheroics. Uh, but that was sort of the key moment that I've seen in so many, uh, of the early Marvel comic, of uh, the early 1960s Marvel comics, the the ones that 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 are you know what made Marvel Marvel, the 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 ones of uh, uh, Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, it's it's something that I had always thought was an innovation of the Jack Kirby Stan Lee team and an innovation that they came up with at that time in the 60s, and so to see it here in a um, in a Marvel comic from the 1940s, uh, uh, written, written by Bill Finger, but, but possibly with, with input from Stanley or, I mean, Stanley edited it. So even if, even if this story was made with zero creative input from Stanley, it's definitely a comic that he, you know, was aware of and, and had, had, I'm sure, you know, at least proofread. So, um, you know, this, this, this is, you know, so, you know, this is a, a a major ingredient of of the Marvel formula that that um, you know here's here's where it seems to me it came from. Uh, uh, it, you know, it's possible there's some earlier story that 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 both are are referencing. But as far as I can tell, this this is it. So if anybody has any any um, you know clues or any any ideas, you know for you know. That, that can can uh, enhance this, or or maybe uh, you know offer some some evidence of, of some some other earlier possible source, uh, you know please please uh, you know do so in the comments. Uh, so uh, anyway, thank you very much, and I'll talk to you again later.